in today's video, we're going to be looking at the key facts of the Boston Terrier breed. Welcome back to the Boston Terrier channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenwayCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Boston Terrier and then how to become high level canine leaders that raise the perfect Boston Terrier. So if you're a lifelong lot Boston Terrier lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new Boston Terrier, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Boston Terrier video. So then, today's video is where we'll be exploring all the key facts about the Boston Terrier. So let's get started. Let's first take a look at their typical temperament and personality traits. A world away from their historical use as fighting dogs, a Boston is a perfect compact companion. They're renowned as one of the friendliest breeds, either for a single person or a couple to a family with children. They're people orientated and amusing. The small size means they'll ha be happy in any home, given the access to proper exercise. You'll want to be able to give them 30 to 60 minutes a day of interesting fun exercise. This will alleviate boredom and strengthen your bond with them. This little dog will be one to keep you laughing all day with their humorous tendencies and spurts of hyperactivity. Training is a must for this breed as they're really quite intelligent. Be wary though, with that intelligence comes mischief. Mischief is just an outlet for boredom or lack of mental stimulation, so with some daily training or games, they'll be a joy to have. Now, for something a bit more serious, the health of the Boston Terrier. This breed is known as a brachycephalic breed. If you aren't aware of this term, it describes all breeds that have a shortened muzzle or flat face. With this physical characteristic, it can affect their respiratory tract, making it difficult to breathe. Now, Bostons aren't the most severe brachycephalic breed, a Pekingese being a prime example of extreme. There are still key truths you need to be aware of if you choose to get one. To stick with the brachycephalic topic, the Boston can have trouble breathing, be at high risk of asphyxiation pneumonia or where they inhale their food or water into their lungs, causing an infection, and be intolerant to heat. Whilst these can be serious issues, there are steps which you can take as the owners to lower these risks. Researching and locating a respectable breeder, for one, to ensure steps have been taken in order to produce healthy puppies. Providing them with slow feeders is the most effective way to ensure they don't eat their food too quickly, especially if you can't be there to supervise. And in the summer, be aware of the weather. Do not walk them if the weather isn't suitable. They're best to go a day or two without a walk to the park if, if it risks heat stroke. Heat and humidity will cause your Boston to pan, and with their small respiratory tract, this becomes counterproductive. They will have to pant harder than, say, a spaniel, preventing them from actually cooling down. This can be, then lead to heat stroke, which can be fatal. Another medical concern you should be aware of is that the Boston Terrier can have luxating patellas, or loose kneecaps to non-medical folk. This can vary in sensitivity, and the best way to reduce the risk for this is, again, by researching or buying from a good breeder. A good breeder will be aware of this issue and will take steps to ensure they breed dogs that will hopefully be less affected. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to quickly let you know, if you didn't know already, I have a completely free course on the principles of canine behaviour. As a canine behaviourist, I've put this together with my years of experience, skill set and knowledge to help you understand all the areas of canine behaviour that are important for you to become a high level canine leader and then you can fix your dog's problem behaviours at home or maybe take the first steps into working with dogs with problem behaviours. So again, if you want to check out that course, it's completely free of charge. The principles of canine behaviour, there'll be a link down in the description box below. And I can't wait to see you over on that course. Gentle exercise or just being able to prevent them from charging up and down the stairs or on and off the sofa can help prevent them from becoming lame with this issue. But if you happen to notice any lameness or suspect discomfort, always consult a vet. We've mentioned breeders a bit in terms of health and there is another crucial fact you need to know should you ever want to breed a Boston Terrier. The bitch can really struggle to naturally whelp her puppies. The big head and shoulders combo of the Boston is extremely counterproductive for a smooth labour, for obvious reasons. This is an extremely dangerous concern as both mum and pup can pass away if you don't act quick enough to get her to the vets for a c-section. Despite its small size, a Boston can be gluttonous with their food. 
We've already mentioned that a slow feeder can stop them from wolfing down their food. But you also need to make sure they don't, you don't overfeed them or give them too many calories. Now the Buster requires a simple wholesome diet, nothing too fancy. When looking for suitable food for your companion, you want there to be little to no byproducts. So you want to check for real protein sources such as lean muscle, fish and seeds. Dogs are carnivores by nature. You want their food to include animal protein wherever possible. Essential fats are another key part of their diet. Key word being essential. The fats you want to be aware of in your Boston's diet is omega-3 and 6. A fish-based diet of either salmon, mackerel or sardines would give your dog an abundance of these fats. But for less smelly options, pork, beef, hemp and flax seeds are also a good option. Now to the non-essential aspect of their diet, carbs. This aspect is very dependent on the activity level of your Boston. If you have a lazier pup, restrict the carbs. Much like humans after Christmas, you want to stay away from starchy carbs for a Boston, for example grains, rice or potatoes. These are less digestible and can be high in sugar. Not good for a breed that is susceptible to weight gain. Instead, try them with blueberries, apples, carrots, bananas, pumpkin seeds or almonds, to name a few. To keep their carbohydrate intake low, use their favourite option as training treats. This will ensure they work for their carbs, meaning they're less likely to become overweight. Lastly, vitamins and minerals. If you choose a more raw based diet, a lot of the protein, fat and carb sources I've mentioned contained a varied combination of what the Boston needs. But if you instead decide on looking for a ready made kibble or wet food, I'll tell you the ones to look out for. The vitamins to include are D, E and B1, which can be found in good protein and carbohydrate sources. Don't worry too much about vitamin C. Whilst it's good to include it, dogs are clever enough to manufacture it for themselves. For minerals, you want to look for magnesium, selenium, phosphorus, manganese, sulfur and iodine. Again, these can be found in the aforementioned protein, carb and essential fat sources. Now, this can sound overwhelming. We aim to educate and guide all types of dog owners here at Fenrir. So we recommend to always consult a vet or registered canine nutritionist if you have any concerns or queries. So, let's have a quick recap. A Boston Terrier will be a loving, goofy companion suitable for people of all backgrounds and situations. They're easy to maintain if you've done your research. Whilst they can come with medical concerns, it is something that can be manageable if you've taken the right precautions. The most important thing is research. Research is where you can find all the facts you need before deciding on the breed suitable for you. Hopefully this video has given you some food for thought about the Boston Terrier. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comment section below. And don't forget, if you're new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Boss and Terry videos coming here every single week. So, I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Boss and Terrier channel.